why there should be no reason you should be late in the other room. <laughs> Hey, I had, look, I had to get this ponytail together. Um, Looking great. So, Looking great. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. I mean, I, I woke up this morning, got breakfast ready. What? Uh, I, I woke up this morning, got breakfast ready. So the we least. Got, this, what, this what type of show we going to have today. We going to just be lying. Because that's the reason why I'm late. Because I had to cook a full breakfast. Hey. Lisa, a full breakfast. That's what that's what I cook. Grits, eggs, bacon, um, toasted croissants. Yeah. And I had a so we just go we just go tell fibs this morning. All right. <laughs> no, you're gonna tell fibs. Come on, let's get so, I got, you know. So got, look. First of all, let's give it up for Carmen Comedy. Looking beautiful this morning. For the live, uh, the live edition today, um, so we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna tell the people how we met, and uh, I, you know, let me let me start off and just tell how we met. You know, I just want to put a little honesty. You know, every day <laughs> I looked at my DMs, and I'm just I'm like, what is this? And I look at my DMs, and it's Carmen Comedy in my DM. Just oh, you're so handsome. Oh, if I could just get my hand in that bed. <laughs> A whole year? Every single day. I didn't want to block you, but I was just ignoring you. I don't I, I don't think stalking is just checking to make sure you're okay. I was just in your DM like, hey, you know, making sure you're good. Heard there's a storm you, out there. I'm okay. You didn't even know me. I was like, there's a storm out there in South Carolina making sure you're good. South Carolina? Uh, I was in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> in my DM. She's in my DM, and then, you know, basically, somebody... Don't lie. I'm, I'm not going to participate. <laughs> One of our mutual friends hit me up and was like, hey, Carmen want to talk to you. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm leaving the building because I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. She don't want to put out the truth. Um, so, no, so, Carmen... You going you gonna to tell the truth? Tell, uh, so tell the people how we met. So I, I knew who you were. You was a comedian. And I think I saw you at one place like years ago. You continuously DM me like all the other thirsty dudes that be in my DM, and I ignored you. Yeah, please get it together because you're on here looking crazy. I'm giving them this ponytail. And you. So my friend Naeem hit me up and was like, my boy Nick got a crush on you. And I was like, Nick who? And he was like, Nick Carthan. And I was like, oh, I'm good. Be telling the truth. I was like, oh, I'm good. So he was like, well, you know, just let him train you. I know you said you wanted to get your body back in shape. And I was like, I don't want to be dealing with nobody who's getting ready to be stalking me or whatever. What? You don't got to tell the people all of that. What? What do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, Okay, so he was like, just let him train you. And I was all like, well, I, if he got a crush on me, I mean, that'd be a good idea because he's going to be constantly pressing me and like, I'm not getting ready to set myself up even though I do want to lose this weight. So maybe three months later, I hit him up like, okay, you know, give me your pricing. Oh my God. He hit me up. He went from $40 a session to, to $5 a session. He was like, you know what? Look, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I gave you a discount because of my boy. Oh, right? You went all the way down to $5. I, I gave you a discount because of my boy. My boy was like, yo, take care of my homegirl. So I gave you a, a company discount. You went from forty dollars a session to five dollars a session in so, a day. So, people, I want to let you know, you know, I take my training serious. <laughs> Carmen canceled for a whole month. I did. I did. For a month, she even told me, 
she had a a, a, a throat injury, like a, a what a throat sickness or something I like that. Throat. She had strep throat and was like, I will call you to let you see I'm in a hospital right now, but I can call you back by. Because I didn't feel bad, but tell them that I didn't pay you. I didn't pay you, but I canceled for like a whole month. I was like, I can't do it this week. Uh, I know I said this week, my bad. Here's $25. Just leave me alone. So we finally got our session together, you know, and I was training her. She started making moves, like touching on me on my arm. Oh my <laughs> Touching up my, touching up my arms. Oh, like she, she said, she said, hey, feel my stomach. I put my, she put my hand on her stomach. You know, I gave her a massage in the gym. I'll show you the areas I wanted to focus on. Now, mind you, I had a whole boyfriend. He didn't give a damn about the fact that I was having a whole boyfriend. He didn't give a damn about the fact that I was having a whole boyfriend. Okay. And we was like going through a little breakup, you know, long distance thing. He didn't care. He he did not care. And he kept saying, if you was my woman, this, and if you was my woman, this inappropriate. And 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 while she I stretched her. I stretched her. I gave I her one of the put out the gym. I almost got us put out the gym. Two old ladies looked at us and was like, oh my God. It was and and we we got a warning actually from the gym from the stretch that I gave her. After I gave her this stretch, she did not want to go home. She took me to the mountain um, to go hiking, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I want to just talk to the people who just came in from my live, who may not be familiar with you, they may not be. But this is, this is my fiance. We're talking about how we met, how he stopped me on Instagram for an entire year. Just uh, trying to make sure she was OK. <laughs> whatever. A mutual friend, Naeem Lynn, hit me up and, you know, was like, you know, and I told him, was like, Naeem, I'm in a relationship. You know, I'm not getting ready to be messing with no comedians. You know, I'm good. And he was like, just let him train you. So after months of dodging him, I finally started having training sessions. And when I tell y'all, he was really working me out hard. Like, I saw, in two weeks, I saw major major results hey jordan <laughs> i saw major results and so he started putting the moves on me like you know after like a month of training me he started putting the moves on me uh, okay so let me tell you guys what happened in my backpack i'm a traveling trainer so oh, i yes, never know yes. tell me I, this. I, what's up jordan i never know where i'm gonna end up in my backpack i have survival stuff i have my resistance bands and so and i have condoms in my bag from oh, time to time you reach in this bag and, and grab the boxing glove i grabbed the boxing glove a whole condom flew out i was so turned off like, and she thought oh, yeah, he have a whole condom in his bag she thought that the con she thought that the condoms was a hit on her, and I'm like, no, I'm being professional. This condom so is in my bag just in case anything could go down. Nothing was going down. I was told. So when she when she saw the condom, the gold wrapper. Oh my god! She basically was like, babe, no, not babe yet. She was basically like, listen, let's go to the mountain to <laughs> to work out. We went on the mountain. I told her my dream. She told her mine. Um, I sat down on the uh, on the on a rock, and she sat on my lap. I'm gonna just tell you how professional I was. I kept myself cool, and I said, "Carmen, this isn't professional. I'm here oh to do a job." Instagram live and lie like this. <laughs> not gonna lie like this. We did go to the mountains because I was getting bored with the workouts and. We went to the top of the mountain, the Culver City Stairs, the place that people work out at. And I'm not going to lie, y'all. We went there. I thought he was going to jump off the cliff. Like, he was so depressed and telling me about all his issues. And I just really felt sorry for him. So I was trying to calm him down. So I moved him away from the edge of the cliff because I thought he was going to jump. I thought he was going to commit suicide. You know what I'm saying? So I tried to move him over to an area where I could talk to him and kind of use my therapeutic instincts to kind of talk him out and tell him it's not so bad. And that's how we got, that's how I so, got on the map. So basically she fell in love with me after the hike. Oh my God. We went out for a snack. 
We went to Subway. It was across the street. And I got her a sandwich. First of all, I said, you hungry? She said, no. So then she got herself a flatbread with some leaves in it, you know. <laughs> oh, um, that's what you had, a flatbread with some leaves. So what I did was I said, look, don't do this. You know what I mean? I'm the trainer. Let me. I got a sandwich. I cut it in half. I gave her a piece. And I gave her the red velvet cookie. And she was like, wow. Mendo he took me on a date. After the workout, he took me to Subway and paid for my food with the money I had just gave him to train. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, yes. hold on. Yes. <laughs> let's make this clear. Let's, let's make this clear. We went to Subway, and he and he was like, oh, no, I got you, because I had just gave him the money to what? People got to hear about my financial woes. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, that was kind of our first meeting. So after that, you know, once we started getting cool, he started doing what most professionals do when they get comfortable with you. He started hitting me up like, oh, I can't make the training session today because I got my daughter. And I'm like, what? So I just bring your daughter, you know, and we're going to make it work because now I'm starting to lose weight. I'm starting to feel like I'm really doing good. And so he brought his daughter and I met his daughter and she was like the sweetest child I have ever met. She was so cute, so sweet. And he, he, she, she was, her clothes weren't matching. I'm like, what are you doing? So it was like a hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I like my daughter to express herself, you know? So I let her mix and match the colors. You know what I'm saying? Had, I didn't know what this baby had on. The clothes did not match the, the ponytail that he tried to do. Tell, tell the people how when I first met you, you know, you didn't really know have a good music selection. I introduced you to Nina Simone. Oh my God! I, I introduced fly her now. to Nina. Birds come fly, oh. birds come fly, y'all. So, shortly after, so he <laughs> put me to all the sessions, and you know we would like go get something to eat after the sessions, and he was really hanging out. And then I went through a traumatic experience. See, that's how he got me. He, I was vulnerable. My daughter got shot in St. Louis. And, you know, I called him, and I was like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm going to do with my daughter. And I ran there on foot. I ran there <laughs> on foot because Brandon's, Brandon's on the live. Brandon, Brandon, I forgot what Brandon had to do, but I ran to the house on foot. He did, he, he did, he, he caught, by the time he got to the house, my daughter was already recovered. Uh, so and. <laughs> And, that, and, and, and listen, she could have told me that when I was there, but she rushed me out of the club while, me, while we were having shots that night. So I ran home, and I told her, I said, well, since your daughter recovered, you know what time it is. So my daughter <laughs> picked it up. Uh, she got shot in the leg. It wasn't anything life-threatening, but I was really, really upset. And I'm not going to lie. Before I called him, I did call my ex that I had been dealing with for all those years, and he didn't answer. You know, he wasn't there for me, so then I called him. I didn't know this. He, what? what were you I didn't know. Him? Wow. I didn't know this at all. Every day. We had your butt messing around. So I was like, oh, let me call Nick. So I called Nick. He dropped what he was doing. He came right over. I was like, oh, my God. You know, but she good. I'm like, I'm just so mad. And he was like, why don't you bring your daughter here? You know, that way I can help rehab her. And he, he I did. I told her ex, I said, don't leave your girl around me. True player, for real. That's a nigga, for real. Do, 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 do. Oh, God. Do, 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 do. Somebody got a question oh. for you. Somebody got a question. Hold up, man. Do you see it? OK. When is the wedding? We have a secret wedding date because we have stalkers hating on our love. So we cannot release <laughs> the wedding dates nor the month. Um, but it is going to be this year will be the wedding. We'll send a link out for the video so you guys can watch it. Yeah, we'll send 
So, like, DM us if you want us to send you a link, and we'll send you the link a couple of days later so like, everybody can watch it. Because um, I've been I've been going crazy preparing this wedding every night. I'm putting together the decorations, and, you oh, know, I just, God. I'm just a Mozart when it comes to this stuff. Like, sometimes. Let me call you by your whole government name on this live. Hey, hey, they know me as Nick. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want to say as we close out to how we met. So my daughter came to Los Angeles and he began to train her and talk to her about how she got herself into this situation. And my daughter opened up to him and was telling him things that she had never told me. And they began to, they had a bond, you know, a close bond. And he began to tell me, maybe you shouldn't handle her like this. Maybe you shouldn't do it like that. And at the same time, his daughter was coming over and uh, to visit him. And so I'm connecting with, uh, with with his daughter, you know, because she was, at the time she was only three years old, she was about to turn four. And so I helped him throw it together like a little fourth birthday. And I was just really connected with his daughter. So kind of the story of us really connecting, our souls being brought together, it was kind of through our daughters. That let me tell you, let me tell you how much I'm feeling this woman. So when we broke up one time, oh my god, to keep her, we broke I up ran the kitchen, time. and I put five Advils in my mouth. I said, "If you leave me, I'm gonna end this shit." And she was like, "Well, here's some water to swallow that motherfucker down." Drink up. If you're gonna do it, do it. Don't play with wolf. Call my bluff. Because I was gonna get the money out your wallet and then call 911. Like I don't know what happened. He came over here and popped these pills, and he didn't have no money in his wallet when he came. I still got the hood in me. So. And them Advils, uh, after about three minutes, them shits taste nasty. <laughs> she made me put all the soggy Advils back in the bottle. I'm like, you wasted my Advils plan. But, um. Yeah, so you know that's how we met. That's how we met. And you I know, did talk to him one time when we when we uh, broke up. I stopped him one time. Yeah, so I was coming home from a radio show after we broke up, and it was a black car outside the driveway. I had my friend Brandon Lawrence. I said, "Look, that's Carmen's car." So we pulled up, and she tried to clutch back so we couldn't see her, but. <laughs> I know the license plate. You but know. it's all good. I don't, I'm not ashamed to say that I so rolled over there because we had just broke up and I wanted to see what bitch was dropping you off because it's hard to stalk a nigga on the bus because I can't just find the car. I got to find his boy card. I checked 13 different buses on Crenshaw. You wasn't in that one at all. So I had to sit outside your house and wait to see who dropped you off. So I showed with so and I and, and that right there that right there let me know she was a wife. <laughs> Shout out to Todd Davis. She got me killing God. <laughs> Talk him to us. Yes. What's up, Boogie B? That right there let me know she was a wife. You know, if y'all got any more Q&As, y'all can put it on the bottom. 13, yo, Boogie B, 13 buses. Ladies, I ain't never stopped nobody on the bus. That shit is hard. You ain't got no car to tear up when you mess up. story. Fellas, whenever you jump in a female's DM and they're like, everybody like, stop stalking them, leave them alone. I was in that DM for a year. <laughs> Look at me now. Never let no one deter you. You don't stop till you get blocked. 